Sakaridi's device's Achilles. I think I said that right. Don't ask me to say it again, because I'm going to call it the Saksaridis. Um, you can read the name down in the description. These are Greek, like the salad. Um, is that a Greek salad? I don't eat Greek salads, so I wouldn't know. Anyway, these were sent to me, and it's a pair of monoblock speaker amplifiers. And they're 8 watts a channel, and they're tubes, in case it is not plainly obvious to see that they are tubes. And they're about $2,600, 26 or $2,700 a pair. So, Zeos, two gemstones in the top, please. So, what do the Greeks have to offer us? Well, honestly, at 8 watts a channel, I have them hooked up to the RF7s there. I'm uh, sourcing them from the Aoun X8 Magic DAC, which is actually being sourced from the coaxial output on the Songkaz SGD1. Did you know it has an output? I mentioned it, but it's like, that's super fucking convenient because I got that whole setup over there with its own amp and that's the DAC for that, but then it'll just pass through another one for this one. This is great. I can get a hundred of those Songkaz DACs, just pass one to the other. That actually would work. Interesting. Anyway, so I'm using the X8 Magic DAC, which is the DAC that has the uh, modable op amps. So this is already like, I know I made that video recently of the Hala May, if you haven't seen it, it, where I basically said all DACs basically sound the same. Well, this one is an exception because you can actually open up the little panel on the bottom. And uh, I can't even close it because the, the op amp I put in is so big. And it will actually change how it sounds. And I'm using it because these are not balanced. Um, RCA in only. And this is not balanced. It's RCA down only. It's, just, it's, it's whatever warmth, fuck you. More. More! So, um, I'm going to walk around the unit literally because they're too heavy to pick up. They're uh, four and a half kilograms each, I think, according to the manual. Yeah, they're, they're, like, they're like a solid nearly 20 pounds. And they came, if you want to watch the unboxing, Zeos, don't just link the unboxing channel, you lazy bastard. Link specifically to opening up this thing because they come in a wooden crate. Like like Indiana Jones and uh, the the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the crate with a fucking temple, the 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 Ark of the Covenant was in. They come in a little miniature one of those, made out of all wood. And I'm like, oh Jesus! And I had to unscrew things to take it out because they were just all packed in there. Um, yeah, let's walk around. I I guess we'll start on the face, the fascia. So you have three tubes, and I'm gonna link to the. There's two pages I'm gonna link. Well, actually, no, there's only one page I'm gonna link. It's the um. A dealer. This is not like Amazon. You can't buy it direct from Succeedus. I see. I can't. I read. I did it once. I read the pronunciation once, and now it's just th these. You can't buy the Achilles workaround. Can't buy the Achilles from anybody but like a dealer. So I'm going to link to the one that the guy who sent them to me said to link to. If you could find a uh, it's another dealer that has Achilles, then go for it. We have got a 300B. And these are all the stock tubes, by the way. I know tube rolling is a huge thing. And I know some people are just psychos. And they'd look at this and go, holy fuck, I can't wait to go spend hours on eBay buying random tubes to see if they work. All for that. Go for it. Because I, frankly, don't think they need it. Ever. Um, fascia. Big, thick piece of metal with like a rough finish. Power button is literally just a push button with a green outline. Green, not blue. Green. Automatically best stamp ever. You know how long it's been since, like, look, this has green, very, very dim green. It should be brighter, actually. But this has a green little push button on. There is a little VU meter. I will take the camera off my head to show you. It says plate voltage, DC uh, MA. And uh, what I can figure out what this does is when you're really pushing these amplifiers, that plate voltage will drop, and you don't want it to drop. Or If I put on something and I turn this up to, like, a boom, if I get the boom boom going on, those will, those don't go up with volume. They go down. They're showing how much is, oh God, we're stressing it. Because when I did the review of the RF7s, which is what hooked, what's hooked up, I hooked these to just the tweeters, and then I hooked my A800 over there for the, the balls, for the 10-inch. But sitting here, basically in a near-field setup, because I mean, if you look at the actual arrangement this is like a seven foot triangle 
which is not what you, you know, that's, that's small. Having eight watts of channel on probably the most efficient speaker that I currently have makes perfect sense. Um, the back of the unit, um, when they showed up, by the way, one of them is labeled A and one of them is labeled B. And by I mean labeled, I mean with this piece of terrible masking tape. And here's A with terrible masking tape. And I don't know how they haven't fallen off. It's been a miracle. I'm going to put you on the table. Because when you unbox the tubes, the tubes are labeled A and B. And the amps are labeled with terrible masking tape A and B. Because they match the tubes. So that the, per unit, per device, the tubes match. I love, I'm, this is like the back, like... Yoko's here. She wants she wants something. I want something. Tubes. Um, so yeah, there's there's match thing. When you put it together, you get it. And then, and this makes PP hard now. The RCA input on this one is red, and the RCA input on this one is black. So they actually are marked right and left. I'm not sure if you have to have it that way. Honestly, you shouldn't if they're matched. But um, the OCD in me is like, no, no, no. A is the right one and it always will be the right one or was it the other way around i forget as long as those tubes never come out and if you take them out mark them power plug which we cannot pull out um one of the things in the manual is like never ever don't have a speaker plugged into this when it's on if you turn that on there's no speaker it could damage things because it's trying to because it, it's class a these are both class a by the way class a tube amps so you need to have a load, even if there's nothing playing, even if the volume is all the way down in your preamp, there's no volume control on either of these. They just are. So any little static noise through the ooh, through the air, that was a Lewis Black, ooh, um, will just try to be amplified. And if there's no place for it to go, it just sort of hums around in the tubes and bad news. Um, I do want to show you these, if I could even, these banana plug i can't take out the speaker because i just said it these banana plug things are so overbuilt like i can't even like i can't they're like the size of my thumb and they have like a a weird like rotating pattern like i don't for, for screwing things in like this will go down i don't know i'm using banana just plug it into the back so i'm using the big stupid power connectors that i got off amazon i think these are like 18 dollars each but look how cool they look. They make this look like a professional outfit and everything. Um, the actual amps themselves are rather long. How long? Do I have a tape measure? I do, because I was setting up speakers earlier. How big you, big boy? Damn, 15 inches. If anyone ever asks you, is 15 inches enough? You say yes. So that's 15 inches long. So they're not 15 by, now there you go, six and three quarter, that's more reasonable. Seven. Oh god um what was i saying penis oh no penis um tubes come with it tubes matched the finish is <sighs> look they're made in greece so you got to give them a little bit of a, like a, okay that's because they're made in greece the finish the front panels, these are lovely. These are like Rupert Nev level, like metal, like with the speckled, like really textured there. I love, love this. The rest of it looks like a skateboard. It, it's like very glittery, shiny. Like, like they know they can't get perfect metal. So they're like blast it with this like glittery, just it's, it's a little much. It's a lot of much. I don't care. Most of the times you're not going to have lights like this shining on top of them. So you'll get away with it a little better. By the way, I'm going to just put this back up for a second. Hold on. We have to talk about what this does to sound, by the way. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Um, so the finish is, mm -hmm. I love the plate on top. I love that's like a, just a giant, like, cause you're gonna be keeping these on the floor most likely. So when you walk up to it, you're not gonna be able to see the front. You're just gonna see that. And it's got the, to see your, soccer ease, sock, rock, sock, rock and sock and robot at ease, um, things. 
it does come with um, what I call little Zeos preventers because uh, not everybody, or even if Chewbacca is around, if these are on the floor, you don't want Chewbacca sticking her ass all on the goddamn fucking tube. So you have these nice little covers, which are very vented. This one's got a slight paint chip, but you know, and then a very thick, like that's that might be thicker than a quarter inch. That that's that's not quite a centimeter, but I'd say like bulletproof piece of Lexan and you're supposed to just put it over the top. Um, the way it mounts is kind of odd. There are threaded screw holes here in the front and then there are threaded screws here that are smaller than the threaded screw holes. So you just put it over it and you'd obviously not want to do this while it's running but I'm doing it and it just sort of like falls into those screw holes and that's it. Like it doesn't actually screw in. It's just a threaded hole with a threaded rod and it's just and that's it. So it doesn't like fall out. Like it's, it, it gets hard to remove because it's like the, the threads bind. I've been running them like this obviously because cattails and the people just want to touch it. So I'm going to take them off for the review though. Slide them over here. It's a nice little feature. It's a nice feature. I like that. Um, these will take different tubes by the way. Uh, that's listed on the site. I'm just going to keep using this until I feel like it. In fact, it comes with the ground adapter, I think, behind it. Hum cancellation. There's a there's an adjustment. Uh, things I've read in the manual. Things that uh, seem important, I should tell you. Number one, uh, 15 minutes, turn them on. Do not send any signal to, to even test if they're on. Just turn them on and wait 15 minutes before you turn up your preamp. That's what they suggest you do. They also say don't put them too close together. Because the electromagnetic interference of one of the power transformers can interfere with the other one and you'll have weird noise issues. So you got to keep them separated. you got to keep them separated. Um, I, that kind of upsets me because since I am keeping these, they said, yeah, you can just, just hold on to those. I don't fucking send them back to Greece. Do you think they really want to send these back to Greece in the wooden crate? Oh my God. Um, so yeah, they'll be here for me testing. Honestly, only super efficient speakers. I had the, where are they? They're behind me. I had the triangle, I'll link to the triangle um, Gaia's, those towers on these, which is the guy who sent me the Gaia sent me these. And really those are a much more inefficient speaker than the Klipsch. So I was able to use those with this. In fact, when I did the center channel, the triangle center channel, I was using these two amps to power the towers with this. And I was basically all the way up, just trying to get it to balance out. So they, you can't, you can't turn them on and use them. You, if you turn them off, you got to let them turn off for two minutes and then you can't move them for 20 minutes after they've been running. And, and then, um, what was the other, there was another weird, like conspiracy level thing that they were like, don't do this. Uh, it probably isn't important. Um, or maybe it's very important and I should remember it immediately. No, it's not important at all. Uh, yeah. Exp what, a, oh, really good. Where the fuck's the book? Give me the book. Get the book. Get the book. We got a nice book. Look at this book. Athens, Greece. Tassaridis devices. You can even have the address if you want to visit them. Um, introduction. Key features they're going to talk about in this book. This, this is literally like three pages long. Connection and installation. Literally all of these is do not do's. Dangerous. Don't take it apart. Power the careful. Do not insert any objects into the amplifier. Good ventilation or it'll explode. Um, I did have to wait a little bit longer for these than normal because they are usually 240 volt because they're made in Greece. So they now have a 110 volt version, which is the one I'm using. So you may have to specify that when you're looking for one. Never pull the power cable from the cord. Make sure you use a high quality mains cable. Always disconnect before putting on. Never expose direct to sun or operate it outdoors. That's bullshit. I want to put this outdoors right now. Um, oh, and this is where it says to let it warm up for 15 minutes before you actually run any signal through it. Uh, buh, 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 buh. They expect 3,000 hours lifetime on the tube. My recommendation to you is don't forget to turn these off at night. In fact, uh, when I had them upstairs, which is where I was using them in the bulk of the time, I had them on one of the CASA sockets. Link Zeos to the CASA, like just, it's just, a, it's just an appliance socket. These draw, oh, I should tell you how much they draw, uh, 200 watts each each so just it's like a hair dryer on low no hair dryers on low are still like 800 watts so this is still half of a hair dryer on low but you know half of a hair dryer on low never sounded 
So fucking good. We'll get to the sound. We're getting to it. This is the part you're looking at. We'll get to how fucking great they sound. Shut up. Um, never touch them. You'll burn your hands. Position over 20 minutes. Blah, 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 blah. This one says there's an on-off switch at the rear, and there isn't. And this is specifically the book for the Achilles. So they probably just copy-pasted this from all their other amps. Always if you're next. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then we get to the specs page, and this is where it gets interesting. So, power output, 8 watts per channel. Now, if you recall, the only other tube speaker amp that I have is the Audio Valve Solaris, which is the one that does a headphone out, balanced headphone out, it does electrostatic, and it just does speakers, and it's 8 watts a channel. And I'm going to tell you straight up, I love the Audio Valve Solaris. This shits on the Audio Valve Solaris for speakers. You can't run headphones. I mean, you can run headphones, <coughs> kinda. I would have to be real careful about it. If I swap the HD, uh, if I swap the 880, 600 ohms to a balance connector, I'll run this off of them. But um, yeah, no, because as much as I love the Audio Valve uh, Solaris, it has a relatively you know nominal size power supply, a power transformer, and it has you know, eight little tiny tubes in it. And this has got individually for each channel fucking 12 pounds of goddamn power supply and three giant well at least one giant and two nominally large tubes so this has more power more headroom even it's still eight watts even it's the same wattage according to this the same watt this has got more tube go you can see it's got more tube go and it's half the cost of the solaris so if you're buying the solaris just to power speakers well, you're still going to have to add, let's see, that's that's four grand without the DAC. These are $2,700. you are still going to need to have, you have to $1,300 left over. You have to buy a DAC of preamp. If you have a DAC already, you still need a preamp to control the volume. And you lose the ability to do headphones. So it all balances out in my mind as far as like usability. Would you spend four grand on this Solaris? Absolutely. If you're just doing speakers though, this is the superior setup. Um, harmonic distortion at one watt. So these are eight watts a channel. One watt is what they're measuring at, which one watt is usually enough just to get sound going. Under half a percent, except for at 20 kilohertz where it's 0.8 percent. Now, with a tube, total harmonic distortion is kind of the goal. Not really the goal. Like, you want it to be clean. You don't want it to be like, rah. You want it to, you want it to do the tube things without distorting, like, without breaking the sound. Just, just fuck with it. Just, just, just fuck with it. Um, that's what you tell the prostitute. Don't break it. Just fuck with it. Um, intermodulation. No idea what that means, but at 60 hertz uh, to 7,000 hertz, it's R to 1 quarter, 1 watt at 2.2%. So there you go. Um, frequency response up to 52,000 hertz, down to 12, or 14 to 48 at 8 watts. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, kilo ohms, 6 ohms output resistance, which is 200 watt power consumption, 4 kilograms. That goes on the floor. So, Zeos, you've given us a tour. You've walked us around it. You told us the price. You told us how good it is. Well, you told us how good it is to, to how fucking good is it? So, what do tube amps do to headphones? I think we should start with that. Because I think most of you are more familiar with that, and I am actually way more familiar with that. This is being only the third. I think there was one very small, very lame tube amp thing that I got years ago it might not have even been for speakers wait was it with the little two tubes it might have been that was i remember that little tube amp i don't remember the name of it so this is like the third set of tube speaker things that i've gotten and holy shit when you have a special and it says it in the catalog the, the book this is for specifically high efficiency speakers those that means that high efficiency means you don't need a lot of power to make them get loud. Now, you would think that, oh, I have a small amplifier, get a small speaker. That's not how it works. RB42s will not play on this. RB42 is a little four-inch driver and a little tiny tweeter. You got to pump like uh, legitimately 150 watts into that motherfucker to get it to like party time. I know that because I have them upstairs and I've been pushing 100 watts into them and they're like, yay. Um, but this, this is not... This is to move the tugboat. These are tugboats. They are to move the big slow boys. The ones that just go, here's a half a watt. And loud shit comes out of them. So, 
Literally, this is the best case scenario for these amplifiers. The, period. End of statement. The only other speakers I could have whipped out are the JBL 590s, which I, I had to think, I had to, I had to think, but your guys are new, so I kind of want to give you a little bit, but I could also put you guys on and you, mm, fuck. I'm going to make those the rear channels and then we're going to have fronts and rears and I'm going to die. Um, where's my remote to make the music happen again? I want to, oh, that's not the next track. That's next track. All right. As much as I love the Joker soundtrack, and I just literally, this is what this is. I have this a nonstop for the last 40 minutes before the start of this. I just kept repeating the same songs from the Joker soundtrack. Um, what the tube amps do is, uh, you know, it's hard to describe on headphones too, but it, it fucks with it a little bit. It's just a little bit. It's like, what, what is it doing? What, why is it sound better, smoother, creamier? Because this is old school tech. Anyone who knows like anything since like 1964 has been transistors and little tiny things. And they're super fucking accurate. Boom. Whatever the job is. I honestly don't know how amplifiers work to that sort of level that I could explain it to you easily. But Mudvayne, no. ACDC will get me pulled off the internet, so I have to slow it down, but fuck, I want to listen to ACDC right now. Um, old school tubes are not as fast at doing the jobs of transistors. So they're slower. So, so what does it slow down your music? Does it start playing like this? No, it reacts slowly. Th instead of things being happen, 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 it's like this, happen, happen happen it, it it extra analogs your music if that makes any sense at all this is all digital music obviously it's going through a DAC into another DAC this is converting it into analog and then usually you put it into an amplifier which is usually analog even if it's a digital amplifier it's analog this is adding another layer of I guess smoothing I want to call it smoothing now how it does it and to what extent matters with the tubes as well and you could get tubes that are a little bit smaller and, and react differently to loads. <laughs> loads. <laughs> Sushi. Um, but right now, as these sit, the smoothing filter, like you could pro, it's never been done. It's never been done where you can take a digital signal like in FUBAR, and run a DSP correction, you know, I want to add reverb, and I want to add uh, EQ. And, uh, you can't add the filters to make a tube sound happen. They've tried. I mean, I've got the DAC, the SMSL VMVD1, literally has uh, crystal 123, and then tube 123, and then some other thing 123. And putting on tube 123 tries to do what a tube do to the sound. But... The problem is it's an organic thing. And I know this sounds weird and stupid and I just tell everyone not to buy DAX. But the actual load, if I change, if that speaker the way that speaker is, if I put a different speaker on, what it's doing to the sound will slightly change because the loads will be different. The frequency response of the, of the music will be different. Everything will be different and these will cope with it in a different way, an unpre almost unpredictable way. If you took this tube amp and you took this DAC and you took a measurement rig, you know, a $50,000 measurement rig, and you measured the RCA output of the DAC, and then you measured the speaker output of the amp, knowing that it'll be highly, it'll just be a louder signal, and you looked at the difference, and you could see how it's changed, you could probably analyze what is happening to the sound. Oh, okay, well here's, you could run a million little test tones through it and see exactly what's happening. And if you did that, you might be able to go and write a complicated DSP script to do that. But what load are we looking at? What did you load the, the amp? Because you know how I just said the amp, you can't, be, can't run it without, without speakers hooked up. So you'd have to measure it for a dozen different loads. Kickity. Um, and then average it? Or how do you, like you can't, it's... <sighs> I hate being a tube asshole. But I'm in the tube chat, and my fucking god, fucking tubes, bro, they do shit. 
That's all you gotta know. As much as, as vague as that is, and it's like Zia's, you're not describing exactly what the tube is doing. Everything just sounds better. I did it. I fucking didn't want to do it. I'm gonna stop this video. I'm gonna fucking redo the whole video to not say that. Because that's a bullshit answer that bullshit people would give you. And I'm not a bullshit person. But it's like, it's like the, all right, the best description is if you have an X, an, X, an IFI Zendak and you hit the X space button, you know how it does amazing things to jack the low end? Tubes on the right tube with the right speaker does IFI X bass, but for the whole frequency range. And it just, it's fucking amazing. Because I've listened to these speakers. I listen to these speakers with solid state. I listen to these speakers upstairs. I had them on these fucking amps forever. And down here, just concentrated, not super loud. Like, it doesn't need to be super fucking loud. Gonna change off of ACDC. Shh. The piano. There's just, it's almost like it takes the sound and like whatever sound is happening, instead of it happening and then disappearing, it happens and then slowly fades out. Every note just has a decay, has a small little extension on what it is. Not an echo, just, a, just more, stretches it out. It's like, it's like when you take, uh, no one ever has Silly Putty now. Silly Putty on the newspaper, then you stretch it out, but then somehow it doesn't change the length of time of what you're listening to. It's fan-fucking-tastic. I want to thank Tassers... Sakarides... Sakarides devices and uh, Achilles and Class A and... Oh, fuck. I mean, I know every time I turn them on, it's 400 watts burning, but it's, it's kind of worth it if you're here. You turn it on, you go to the shower, and you're not near it, then you're wasting time and energy. But, oh, fuck. So, yeah, um, Patreon and Subscribestar, they get to see these videos early, up to a week or more. Um, they also get to participate in the yard sales, which come from the 1st and 10th of every month. And if I had something to sell to, that this was replacing, you would find it there. And it would be free shipping to the continent of the United States and one-third shipping cost to you international. Um, because shipping is fucking stupid. Um... $10 uh, private behind the scenes telegram chat, by the way, exists. If you want to get in the real, if you want to know what's happening on Zier Views as it happens, as things get delivered, as I have first impressions, or you want to ask me any questions, that's where you do it. I used to answer questions on the $5 tier. It got overwhelming. It was, I could literally have had another eight, a nine to five job just answering questions. So now it's the $10 tier. It's on my phone. Boom. I hit the button. I tell you what you need to know. Or other people are in there. Very, very educated people in there. A little bit too educated. I don't like them. Keep my eye on them. But um, they'll help you out too. Um, so $10 a month. Either Patreon or Subscribestar. Both work. I get a slightly higher percentage on Subscribestar. But it's a weird system and not all, everybody's in it. Um... Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guide Forum. The Hi-Fi Guides Forum should have speaker section, should have an amp section, and this would probably go in there. I don't think we have a separate tube speaker amp section. I hate when forums have too many sections. There's always that one place that's just dead empty. We have like one post in there. because so I don't do enough of that. Anyway, I'm done. Um, thank you for stopping by. Oh, that wallpaper. The lovely Yoko wallpaper is in the description. Um, if you set that as your background at work, take a picture, send it to me on Telegram. I want to see who's rocking that wallpaper. Well, actually, no one's going to work. We're all working from home. Um, I hope. Say the hell out of your jobs. Anyway, I'm done. I'm going to... Fuck. Fuck. I just want to listen. Fuck. I turned them off. I got to wait now for two minutes.